Hi, I'm Dennis Machida with TheGarageEngineer.com. Today we're going to be looking at the ignition system of an older motor. We're going to be testing the magneto coil, the condenser, and the spark plug wire and how to fix the end of an old spark plug wire. This video comes from a more expansive video series of an Evinrude boat motor that has three horsepower built in 1967 where we take it apart to bring it back to life. So sit back and let's get started. So if you split this down the middle right here, you've got your two halves. you got cylinder one, cylinder two. Um, you've got your ignition coil. The spark plug wire connects right here. There's a, I'll give you a closer look in just a minute. Um, and it goes to spark to cylinder one. You got your condenser, which is connected to your ignition coil and your uh, points. Here's your point here, and here's the rocker arm, and here's the uh, the part where when it hits top dead center, it opens it up. So as this spins around, it opens each side here, and then you got the revert, the opposite on the cil other cylinder here. So I'll show you how to test with a multimeter if your ignition coil is good or not. And then I don't, you test the uh, condenser with the uh, um, resistance, but my multimeter doesn't do that. So since we knew that cylinder one created spark and was good, what I did was I switched the two uh, condensers. And if it worked over here and not over here, then uh, we knew it was the condenser. However, after switching it, condenser one, I mean, um, cylinder one still worked, but cylinder two didn't work. So we're, we're, we know that's good. Um, and then uh, I cleaned up the points. For some reason, this is a 51 year old motor, but it looks really clean in here. At least this is, unless this was really well kept or somebody came in here and changed it out, I'm not really sure. Uh, but definitely the wires are old um, because that leads us to the issue. So I cleaned up the points that worked. Um, we tested the ignition coil. Um, and, uh, and let me show you right now kind of what uh, how to test that. First, you want to check. So the, the ignition coil is made of wires that are round and around this way. It's called a primary windings, and then you got a secondary winding, and that's where it comes through. So when the magnetos, magneto is going around, it create that's where you're creating your spark. It goes from the inside coil to the outside coil to the secondary to the primary. So first you want to check to see if the primary coil, you're just checking to see if there's any breaks. So what you do, there's two wires. Um, don't have this disconnected. There's two wires, so all we do is set for continuity test, and our mine's there. And then two wires coming out, you just uh, touch the wires, and if you hear beeping, and, I mean, there's not much. See, you hear the beeping, that means the current is going through the wire, so it's not broken. Now you need to test to see if the resistance, uh, the ohms. Now these, uh, the range of them is 3,000 uh, ohms to 8,000 ohms is, uh, means they're good. So what I'm going to do is, ch on my... Multimeter change it to 20k the range some of them are auto sensing you don't have to worry about it. this is a cheaper one So uh, you got to set it to yourself and then what you do is you tell you you uh, touch the primary wire and Then the ignition where or where the uh, spark plug wires coming in through there But for right now instead of since I don't have this out. I'm going to uh, take to the end of the um, Where the Spark plug attaches. I can do. I can touch that, and then touch the primary, and let, we're gonna let that set. And it's 3.3. .3, I think it was 3.35. The wire probably takes a little bit of resistance. So we're in the range of this being good. So I checked both of them, and they ended up being good. So which I probably should have checked was the wire first. Um, because just the rubber and everything will ended up being I think inside where the connection of the wire goes into the ignition coil it, it just didn't have a good connection I should have cut it and then reset it uh, but then I started so I ended up taking the wire out and I was playing with it on this end to check it and this end was corroded too so I pulled it off and cut uh, cut the uh, boot off pulled out a extra wire and wrapped it around our ignition coil 
and then I did some tests to um, see if it worked and I was getting sparks so it was, it was the wire uh, so now, then uh, to this morning I went to go get some more wire and we're going to replace it now and then we're going to put it back together and then test it to see if we see if we got spark so that's where we stand right now uh, and let's put it together alright so instead of just pulling the wire out and plugging the wire into the ignition coil I'm going to go ahead and take it out and because uh, I want to test to make sure it seats properly so we're going to take the ignition coil out there's three screws I don't know why they use flat and Phillips but you gotta have two screwdrivers to get this thing out alright and then I, where the ignition coil meets the condenser and the points you unscrew it for, uh, so it's the same thing as if I was undoing over here I'm just doing the same thing over here um, so we're going to disconnect that and I also like to take pictures of all this before we get started just in case um, which I've already done but it's always a good habit to take pictures so if something messes up or you don't know where it goes back exactly you'll know where it goes all right so while we've got this out so I'm going to show you here so the ignition coil comes up and you see how this is there's the wire spark plug wire and here's the ignition coil and it goes right inside there I'm not sure if you can see that or not Let's see if I can get a flashlight you can see deep down in there there you go there's a pin that goes sticks into the middle of the core of the wire and then uh, that's what attaches to this end of it and there's your boot too so um, and I'm going to show you real quickly too once you take your core uh, the ignition coil out if you want to test instead of if you don't have it out then I do it the way I showed you before but if you have your ignition coil out and want to see if it's good um, the wire inside that I just showed you you touch that and then you touch the ignition coil uh, you can't see what's that there you go so I'm touching inside where the spark plug wire goes and then the primary wire so it's going to reset to three point that was about the same so 3.3 one so that's still an acceptable range so I know that's good so this whole side's good it was the wire that was bad so let's go ahead and replace the wire this is special marine wire uh, Papillon ignition wire, copper conducted, um, and then that just pokes right inside. I'm going to do that just to get the initial connection. Don't get straight here. I just want to make sure it has a good connection. I'll pull it out and you can see it pen it penetrated the center core of the wire so that pins pretty straight if it's off a little bit it might hit the white insulation and you don't want to do that you want to hit the center core of the wire so I think we're good on there so now we're going to feed this through so I can go ahead and take this wire out gotta make sure we put the boot back on before we do that I might do a little bit of cleaning so let me pause you clean it and I'll come back okay so we're gonna run the wire it needs to meet up to the front where the spark plug is basically the route is like this however you need to get above this so we gotta go over the speed controller and then wrap it around and then measure it up front so first I'm gonna feed it through the speed controller here alright so we ran the wire around the outside here there's a groove underneath the uh... here and then we pulled the wire through the hole. I'm going to put the boot on. Slide that down just for a second. And then we'll attach the ignition coil. So here's your where the spark plug ignition wire connects. And we'll just attach that in. We'll attach, put the boot, slide the boot over, and then we'll pull the wire, ignition coil wire, back through. There you go. And then we're just doing the reverse order. 
attach all the screws and don't forget the bolt that goes to ignition coil the condenser the ignition coil attaches to the uh, points all right so we just need to feed the extra line back through okay I brought you a little lower here so you can see a little better so we ran our line around here put it through the grommet but you don't want to pull it tight because you want to make sure you have enough line so when the motor is twisted and I'm happy I gotta work on that oh I'm sorry not that one when the speed when the speeds twisted all the way to stop you've got enough slack in your line uh, so it doesn't uh, pull out pull on pull on the cable so now we're gonna add the uh, boot to the end of this All right, the boot's made up of two pieces. You got the spring where it attaches to the spark plug. This little sharp end pierces the wire. And then you stick all that inside the boot like that. And then, that, and then the spark plug attaches uh, to the spring on the inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to pierce the middle of the wire like so so that it hits the core and then we're going to check it for continuity to make sure we got a good connection so I'll be doing the same test as before I'm going to touch one end to here and then we'll touch the primary wire to the ignition ignition coil if you can see we should be getting 3.4 3,400 ohms so I'm test it here there we go 3.3 so that means we're getting a good connection all the way around with our new wire so that's good so now we're going to slide the boot on, and I'm going to put a little dielectric grease in there just to make it uh, slide in a little easier. So you got some dielectric grease. Even if we weren't doing um, this part of it, I would still stick some inside the boot to get it around that connection around here. Um, it's just keep one, it keeps the water out, and two, it creates a little bit better connection between the spark plug and the wire. So keep that straight. So now all we do is we want it to point this way. So we got to get this to, if you can see, got to squeeze it in there. Just like so. And then you should see on the other end of it, it you, I don't know if you can see. Ooh, that's bright. Let's try that. Uh, I don't know if you can get a good. There you go. If you can see down in there, you can see the spring uh, wire. So let's let's test it again to make sure everything stayed kosher. So twenty thousand ohms. We stick one probe in here. And then the other probe on the primary wire. And we're hoping for 3.44 or 3.33. You know, close enough. All right. Good deal. So everything's working now. So let's put the spark plug tester, or we got to put it back together again. And then we'll put the spark plug tester on there. So let's do that. And then we'll just so you add the spark plug tester on here. Connect the other end here. And then I'll bring you out to show you how we put this back together real quick. There you go. We'll do it one more time. So we are getting spark. 
Thanks for watching this video. We're glad you stopped on by. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, and we hope to see you soon.